turn on the torch, light up the flame. Time to melt some glass, my friends. There you are, here I am to explain, to teach, and create again. Yeah, this one's a creating stage. I see somebody's already watching, that's a great thing uh, for being there. But um, hold it a sec, got it. All of a sudden I've got some major, oh, I see what the problem is. Okay, sorry about that, folks. There we are. Are we there yet? Oh, okay. We're, we're, we're sort of, okay. The name of this is Button Punch, and the reason that it's called Button Punch is I am going to show you how I went from a pair of needle nose pliers like this, well, actually like this, to a pair of needle nose pliers like that to make so like a buttonhole punch where you can punch holes for buttons and stuff. Um, this pair of needle nose pliers is just something and it might help if you get a pair that you can easily scrap or, or something that you can get at uh, the flea market or something like that to start out with. But the longer the needle nose and the pointier the point on the needle nose, the better off you're going to be in the long run for your um, buttonhole punch okay uh, I've now the thing is with this instead of just going and making these you know bending them in and going like that I actually heated and bended out a little bit on both sides and then bent over into that that uh, curve there so um, that's what's going on in that direction um, and with that, and this shouldn't take too long, and I know I'm not a metalsmith, and it's pretty cool. I kind of like where they were going, and a couple of people have asked me how did I get them and where can they buy them. <sighs> I wish I knew. Uh, <laughs> I'm just manipulating the glass enough to do the job for me, I guess you could say, and or, or the me metal to do the job for me and with that let's go ahead and uh, let's heat and melt what I'm going to do I'll actually um, mark it with this graphite here and you can't see it no I got a better idea I'll mark it with this this will leave a scratch mark but that's okay I'm going to start bending out on both of these right at where it starts to be like a pair of pliers or a pair of crimpers, okay? And with that, I'm just gonna light the torch. And I'll also give you the uh, above camera view so you can see what I'm doing with the uh, with the actual flame and the, the uh, metal. And again, this is not my forte. It's, you know, like a, a plumber trying to do brickwork. He can probably do the job, but a bricklayer could probably do a better job. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do one at a time. And I'm going to take a pair of, of course, these will do. And I'm going to start heating right at where, and I'm not, I'm going to get it to the point of nice and orange on the metal. And yes, this is going to fatigue the metal. And what I do after the fact and also, if it starts getting too hot for you to handle, I have a bowl of water just at my feet here. Matter of fact, I can probably bring that bowl of water up and onto the table to quench it with. That's just a bowl of water from my... Anyway. Okay, first of all, I'm going to sharpen this flame up a little bit. Let it warm in, and it's starting to get there. You'll know when it's starting to get there because it's going to get really a brighter orange color and start to pit mark a little on the surface. And when it's about like that, you can start to manipulate the metal. Okay, I don't know if you just saw me do that or not, but I am bending it outward. See there? Compared to the other one now, it's it's flayed out and we're going to do that a little bit more on this one 
And then I'm going to quench this side. Hi, Paula. I know I'm, I'm melting metal instead of glass, but <laughs> people have asked me about these, this hole punch, and I, you know, I didn't, there I'm quenching it a little bit, and that's what it takes the, a little bit of fatigue out, and you can heat it and quench it a couple of times, and I'm going to get both of them about that same curve outward. Matter of fact, I'm going to do this one just a little bit more. Who else showed up? Oh, hi. Yeah, again, I'm making the, the buttonhole punch for, uh, and then I'm going to show how to use it. Why not, right? I'm, and it doesn't take long to take a pair of pliers and do this too. It really doesn't. Even with the uh, manip glass manipulation that you know of, it's just a matter of making the metal a little bit more pliable, like so, and bending it outward. And it's not like, it, 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 with it being hot, it is more pliable and bends outward quite nicely. And that's beautiful. Now we're going to do the other side. Same idea. And again, what you're doing is you're heating up the metal so it becomes pliable. You're not heating it to get to where it's starting to become like sparklers. And when it gets pliable, you can do some, you know, fun things with it. Like make these type of pliers. Okay. A little bit more to get about the same angle on the other side. Then I'll quench it again. I know you should be quenching it with oil, but hey, don't have all the good stuff. Okay. Now we're going to start to bend them inward. And this is just basically a curve. And you'll see what I'm talking about. You're going to heat it up a little bit further down. Not so you can get into a button or get into a, 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 an area further away than uh, than just the, uh, the you know a smaller button. Like if you wanted to put a hole in the middle of a bigger disc, you can with these size here. And again, you're heating it up, not to you know force it, or but you're heating it to curve it and to uh, bend it slightly. Almost there, and you again. You're not trying to get it to the hot, hot, sparkly, glittery stage of, of the metal. I know metal is not my forte, but I had enough uh, gumption to try to do it, and it did turn out quite well. And you've seen the results of these these hole punches. Okay, people. And sorry if you hear the wind blowing in the background. It is hot. It's the middle of the summer. And I have to have a fan blowing on me, okay? Okay, now we're going to try to meet these two bins in the middle and have them come down as straight together as possible. And you'll see what I mean. Like, for example, these are more or less straight down, not, uh, you know, uh, curving outward and coming to a point. So let's do this with the other side. And we're coming together, and it's come together quite well. And again, you're not trying to get that. And you don't want to really force it. Don't, like, if you're having to force it, uh, heat it back up a little bit more. Because It's not going to, you're going to be breaking, it's, it's going to make the metal brittle and break off, and it's not good for that. 
for what you want to do. Okay, coming together quite nicely here. Still have to uh, bring the points together. And that's just a matter of manipulating it slightly. There's that side, I believe. I'm going to quench that. And now we're going to bring the other side in a little bit. And maybe straighten it out or curve it just a little bit more. I can see that we're... It's one of those things that you just have to eye it. Make it right. You know what I mean. Oh, that's coming together quite nicely. Yeah, who knew that you could get on YouTube and learn how to manipulate needle nose pliers, right? You thought you were going to be a glass blower. <laughs> now, if you want a really, really, really fine point to punch down to, and that is a good spot right there that I've got, and those are that's about right where I want it. Now what you need to do is heat up the whole thing again. And this is going to what they call quench it. You're going to warm it nice all the way around. And this sort of where you've been bending it a little bit by little bit. And this is going to make it all relaxed and well done. And then I'm going to turn around and use these. But what I was getting at was that if you really want a fine point that they come together with. I'll do that a couple more times. Then you uh, take a file and file the uh, the points down to a nice point before you make the bends and then once you make the bends it'll come together again you saw that it, it wasn't really hard to do it was just a uh, it was just a, a matter of heating it and bending it in the right spot and again you're not trying to over bend it and you're not trying to you're just lightly bending the glass uh, glass wrap. I'm used to saying glass. Bending the metal in the right direction at the right time. And with that, we have ourselves a pair, another pair of buttonhole punches right there. Not the best pair in the world. And I'm probably going to take a file and polish up the uh, points. That, well, uh, I say that and I want to bend the point in just a little bit of a different direction here. Both of them went off to the side a little bit. I didn't notice it until now. And there we go. Boom. Now let's see what they do. I'm going to do this. I'll make a, a quick dichro button. How's that sound? Or two depending upon how, which, where, and when and where, right? Okay. That's out of there. Uh, I've got some dichro right here that I can nip up into some good spots here. And again, that's the fat, uh, this type of pair pliers that I used. Uh, now I'm going to take a pair of wire cutters and nip off the dichro. Oop, that didn't nip the way I wanted it. There we go. One more. There we go. Bring that out. Put that on there. Now let's make some. Let's make a button. Using that same. Okay, now. <laughs> after all that's said and done, I've got to realize that i got to get my little. Uh, I've got to, you can't see it, but I got to put my uh, little, uh, oops, my little didymium lens on so I can see what I'm doing with the, with the Pyrex. Oh, the lens got a little bit from all of that stuff I was doing. Okay. Now that's my, I, you know, you can wear your didymium glasses, but me, I'm just a lazy cuss and I've got trifocals on so it's easier for me to to just have the uh, the didymium between me and the the, the the flame I guess you could say okay 
And if you have a request that you'd like to see me do, now is the time. If you have uh, something you'd like to see me do, I'm finished with the the button part. Now, also remember, shiny side, uh, film side up. My even my son is learning that that trick, and it, it, it's. I guess at first you don't really catch it, and then once you do, it's like ah, there it is. Film side up on those things. The shiny right to the edge, and uh, I'm going to heat and manipulate the, make a little bit of a Maria to put the uh, the button on. I'm going to try a four-hole punch button. Okay, that's nice. Okay, press it in, melt it in a little better, press it in again. That's looking good. Uh, jade green? Ah, jade green, I got it in the hand. Let's do it. And again, I usually cover just the dichro with the uh, color. That way, when you're stretching the color or pressing out the dichro, it goes to the edge with the color. A little easier, anyway. Okay. I know it's been a while, and I know it's in the middle of the night, and I'm sorry about that, folks, but some people work at different times, and they're on a different time zone, so what I'm doing is okay for them. And like I usually say, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whenever you're watching this, and it's true, people are watching it at all hours of the day, and I like that part of it, too. Okay. This is going to be a big button, <laughs> but I'm going to do four holes in it, and I'm also, again, rounding it right to the edge of the dichro with what I just did there. I pressed the, uh, the metal in. Not metal. Now I'm back to, boy, am I, uh, I want to say screwed up with what I'm doing, huh? Metal, dichro, whatever. What is it? Been doing a couple of quartz things, and all of a sudden, every piece of glass that I've been picking up this one here, that one there, and this one here. Oh, you can't see anything there. Sorry about that, folks. I forgot to readjust. Now it should be fine. I'm sorry about that. We'll get there. Right, right. Also, I've noticed, and one of the things you got to do is if you start using metal on your bench, you've got to literally clean up all the metal fragments that fly around, or you're going to have little contaminants. And I just noticed that in this piece that I'm doing right now, lots of little spots all over the thing. And I don't even have the didymium lens on this thing. What is wrong with me? Oh, okay, I got it. Oh, that's the wrong one. Where six thousand things to do in five minutes to do it all in, right? I've got these uh, little sleeves that I've created. One sleeve for one type of torch, and another sleeve for another type of torch. There we go. Why don't you tell me these things? It's too bright. I can't see. Say something in the in the chat room so I can understand you guys. Okay. Here we go. We're going to take that off of here. Oops. Three things all at once. It's going to be a big button, but I'm going to like it. Nip, 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 nip. And then bend it back and forth. Falls off. And now I'm going to flatten it. Then I'm going to put four holes in this button. And again, if you have a request, now's the time. You can ask me and I'll see about doing it. I know I'm live and I'm going over the 30 minutes, but hey, life's like that sometimes. I like the 30 minutes, but I also like 
getting a chance to chat with all of you guys. It has its moments, let's just put it that way. Okay, here we go. Four holes. And we're going to check this out. And what you usually do is so that you're not melting all the other parts of the disc, you're going to take the flame down to practically nothing. And what you're going to be doing is heating up just where you're going to be putting the hole. And press in, back and forth. And that made the nice hole there. And then you can heat it up again in that same spot and ream it out a little bit. And there we go. Next hole coming up. Punch it in. Roll it around a little bit. And again, that makes a nice hole. Nice hole. And then ream it. There you go. Hole number two. I'm going to have to start selling these buttons, right? Somebody might even want one for a shirt, right? Hole number three. Say, oops. Cold weld came off. Touch it too. Heat up where I was melting. It almost came through even with what I was doing. Again, you're heating up just where you're going to put the punch the hole. And then you ream it out a little bit. Yeah, it's coming through quite nicely. Looking like really, really nice. And button number four. Button hole number four coming up. I like this. Button, button. Who's got the button? I've got some of them if you want one. Bell biters, yeah. I'd call it a buttonhole punch because that's what I designed it for, to punch holes into this button. And it does do a quite a nice bail. Um, I'll do that after I finish these holes here. Okay? Okay. And I'm going to heat and ream each hole just a little bit more. And it's looking really good. I'll put this out on my Melting Memories page and show you. Tap that off. Oops, there went my didymium glasses. I mean, my di yeah, my didymium, not my di diacroic. Excuse me. I am thinking the right names for, for a little bit anyway. Okay. Now I'm going to warm that out for a little bit, just a little. And that's ready for the oven. Okay. Now, I have to make a set of those. Yeah, it, it, it is worth it in the long run. And again, all you got to do is go to like a flea market, go to the tool, you know, the junk tool guy and get a pair of needle nose. And I know uh, metal is not my forte and there'll be a welder that will probably look at what I do and say, that is crazy. And it's probably making it a little bit more brittle, but it, it's where I'm not really doing forcible heavy duty stuff. I'm just doing, um, oh, yeah, speaking of doing, let's do, I'm going to do a silver-fumed conch shell. Sound like fun? Yay. I've been, in, I've, I've been doing those conch shells lately, and they're really, I'm really excited about where they've, where they've come from and where they're going. Let's just put it that way. And, yes, I'm going to get down to the point where the buttons are going to be at a, about a third of that size and go through regular button shirts, uh, buttonholes in shirts. Okay. You can't see what I'm doing over here, so let me bring it back a little bit. I'm heating up, and I'm just sort of 
making a point and a longer point at that. Elongate it. A cone. And that's going to be the top of the conch shell. Okay. Now, uh, again, I got to make sure I've got a pair of <laughs> not like I said I've got about three or four pieces of quartz right here I was working on some wind chime stuff and uh, long story okay next thing on the the list of this is that I usually go ahead and bring that down a little bit to about almost Double the length of what you've used on the cone to the top of the conch shell. Okay. And then I come out here and put like a beer mug loop. Or coffee mug loop, if you want to call it. From the top, near the top of the cone. Or not the top of the cone. Down at the bottom of the cone. to the bottom of that um, narrowing that you did. And then I'm going to go about two thirds from here to that loop that I've got right here. And matter of fact, I'm going to start this way. And I'm going to do basically the fold and pull all the way. And if you're using like um, one of the encased colors like blue exotic or something, this will really add some some colors and stuff like that to the uh, mix of the um, to the mix of the conch shell. And the reason I'm doing the conch shell is to make show you the bail on top of the conch shell after all said and done. Yeah, I know. Long way to get to your elbow, right? And you're right. Sometimes crazy does work. And if it wasn't for some of us thinking crazy thoughts or ideas, I think in the long run, uh, we would not have created a lot of the ideas that we have in glass. Because it's almost there. I'm going to seal that up. So it's basically what you're doing is creating a a, it's like an, the uh, hollow part to the conch shell, basically. Okay. Looking good. I'm going to ream it out a little bit with never around when you want it, is it? Now oh, there it is. Here we go. I'm gonna then once it's all said and done and I get it the way I like it in the shell, I will now stretch the shell like so. And that sort of does another number to it to take a little bit of the stress out of what you just did with the um, the looping, I mean the uh, fold and pull going on until you can get it in the oven. And it also makes a, a the bottom half into sort of like a heart shape. That's what you're sort of looking for is that uh, narrowing, narrowing, and then narrowing down to the point type deal. Okay. And this was one of my aha moments with the uh, bumps that were was on the shell. You heat and pull out. You go all the way around. You keep going upwards and spiraling up all the way. Keep spiraling. 
That's why you want a longer cone so that you have a place for these spirals to go to. If you do a shorter cone, then it can't you can't do a nice spiky spiral. Okay. And we got one nice little conch shell going on. And now, and then and then and then and then. Let's see if we can put some silver on this. I don't know if it's got some silver on it or not, but we're going to try it. Of course not. A bit of silver. Oh, here we go. One of my other silver ones. Yeah, this should do it. Got to heat it and squeeze a little. Ooh, one of the pieces is, oh, I don't even have to squeeze it. Should do the job. What you're looking for is a little bit of the silver right on the surface. And the flame down lower like we, we are at the moment. And it starts to basically fume from one to the other. There, I pinched it again anyway. And now it's really going to go hard. Okay, and we got one conch shell. Now we're going to put and use that hole punch to make the bail on top of this thing. And it does do a really nice job to where you know that you're going to get a nice, nice seal to whatever you're doing it to, making a nice weld all the way around. And then all you got to do is heat up a nice blob above that and pull it off. So you know it's not just sort of stuck on there. It's part of the piece of glass, basically. And that's part of the fun of it. Okay, I'm going to use the same hole punch that we made during this show. Let it cool down just slightly. And then start the punch. And again, it, it sort of, you'll hear it almost crunch a little bit and then slide through. And I really do like the longer, it, the, the more depth you can put inside the, the, bu the buttonhole punch. Like you see, these have a shorter depth than these, not by much, but it's got a, a wider. In other words, you can put a hole in a, in a wider piece of glass with these than you could with those. Okay, let's heat that up again. Looking good. And ream it out a little bit. Looking really good. And again, that makes a nice, nice bale. Going to have to uh, file them up a little bit and clean them up. I, I know I, had, I didn't clean them from all that, and it does leave a little bit of black particulate matter onto the button itself or, or, the, or the hole. But uh, comes with time and practice. And I was just showing you in a quick fashion here. Okay, any requests? Now's the time. Anyone, anyone? <laughs> now we've gotten a nice conch shell with bail. And we've gotten the uh, buttonholes. Um, you can see they're nice and they can be uniform, I know. This is just a quick test of the punch to make sure it was working right. Anything that you'd like to see with a hole in it besides my head. <laughs> I think I got enough holes in my head already. <laughs> we'll get there. Right, right. Let me think. Why not? Just a uh, uh, another die crow sparkly glittery something. No, I got a better idea. Might take a little bit of time, a little bit of love. I'm gonna 
get some texture going on here, silver fume this and put some more texture above it. I mean, some more clear over it, sort of encase some slew. I'm gonna try to do, I'm gonna try to do a vortex disc for a pendant piece. A small one, but a vortex piece. You say, how do you get a vortex out of straight lines, right? Right. Oh, what a spin we're in, right? Okay. Fume it. Oh, yeah, that fumed over real well. Oops. Pinch it again. One thing about silver and Pyrex uh, or Boro is that it tends to, oh, I think I just embedded it, didn't I? It tends to, um, oh, there it is. Maybe I can get it up back to the surface here. Oh, yeah. It tends to heat up faster and sort of retreat into the piece of glass faster than they the boro does. And what you got to do is pinch it from time to time to bring that silver back up to the surface. So like uh, squeezing a, 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 a little boil or something, but it, it does a trick. Now we're going to get this a little hotter. We're going to encase all of this. And it's not very big. This isn't very big at all. And we're going to hope it works. May or may not, who knows? We'll find out in the in the long run, not the short run. Fuming is one of the things I love to do. It doesn't take much money to to make a different color. Make sure you got good ventilation in where you're working. I do say that. Okay. Okay, let's see if this is going to do what I want it to do. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I put a piece of hot glass down on my new grippers. We'll survive. Now we're going to see if we can press that down into a Maria and then swirl it a little bit after the fact. Here we go. Pressing down. And now we're going to give it a twist. Twist, twist. See if it works. There we go. Pull that off, flatten it a little more, and then we're going to call that one quits. Oh, yeah. Got a nice little swirl pattern going on. The thing about my shows that they're straight from the hip, and some of them will turn out for you, and if not, I'll Make it to the point where it will turn out. In other words, I, sh I take you from start to finish. Just the way I like to do things. Touch it too. I'm going to melt this down and flatten it one more time. And we're going to call that one quits too. Just a little pendant piece type deal. The swirl pattern worked out pretty nice. Flatten it down. And then I'm going to make this into so like this. Heat it up right here and I'm going to sort of teardrop it. Make the shape of a teardrop going on. There it goes. 
just gravity, letting gravity work for me. I'm not really pulling it, not really doing anything, just sort of heating it up and letting it drip for itself. There we go. I keep doing that. Tilting it one way so that you can see something and then forget to tilt it back. I'm sorry. No, that's the wrong thing. But I think you saw most of what I've been doing, right? Right. Not paying much attention, I guess. Oop. I'll get there. Now, I'm going to put a cold well here at the bottom of it, uh, of course. Quartz, 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 and more quartz. And another piece of quartz. Eat dads. I have too much quartz on my table. Cold weld. Should have done it with just the grippers, but I'm just so used to the cold weld method. Here we go. Again, I'm going to uh, just make a bale, a bubble, uh, you know, nice ball of clear glass on top. Punch it, and that's going to be finished. And again, this turns out to be a nice little hole punch. Uh, buttonhole punch, uh, a bell puncher or whatever you want to call it. And again, I let it cool once you start punching and then ream it back and forth just a little bit or, or spin it, give it a twist, twist, twist. And that helps punch the hole for the, uh, oops. Now to heat it and ream it out a little bit, the hole is made. Yeah, I like it. Yep, and that one is done. And unless you guys can come up with something else that you'd like to see me do real quick, I'm going to call this an evening and maybe do another show in a couple of days. That turned out really, really nice. I like the way, actually, the clear, if you look at it one way, it's nice, and it, uh, it just turned out nice. I like it. You can see the eye of the storm through the whole piece. Not bad. Anyway. <sighs> With that, any requests? Oh, i got five people watching in the middle of the night. That's pretty cool. I like that. I'm excited. Thank you for being there. <laughs> Any requests? I've got, and that, unless you guys come up with something soon, I'm going to, I'll flip it back over to the other camera. There I am. Hello. Well, here it is morning, yes. Making a bat? I actually did make a bat on my... Um, Oh, a bat bat. I mean, uh, for a minute there, I thought uh, the tobacco pipe type bat. But yeah, that will be, actually, why not? Got a little bit of time. Don't have to be anywhere any time in the next little bit. Everybody's here having a good time, chatting away. And it's, you know, a good time to, let's make a bat. Come on. I know I light it funny, but it gets the job done. Okay, I've got some turbo cobalt that I can use. I think well, that's not that. now. You know I'm. I said that there's some turbo cobalt, and you know I'm going to be able to grab everything but a piece of turbo cobalt, right? 
And the turbo cobalt is a very, very, very dark, dark, dark blue. And as it, the wings that, that will come out on this bat will show you, it will, um, it will start, you can start to see blue through the edges. Is that I can do it. Uh, um, I also have, would you prefer a steel wool bat or a cobalt blue turbo, a uh, turbo cobalt? Uh, bat, your choice. Ah, let's get some more clear rod up over onto the table here, so I can play with it. Oh, here we are. I think I'm going to do the turbo cobalt since nobody said anything. Okay, now a bat is basically a mouse with wings. Uh, it's just a matter of uh, bringing out the legs and the um, head in this thing and also the wings. There's still wool. Okay, I'm at this point. I can do that. I will. Still wool it is. And the wings again... Okay, I'm going to probably make this bat about top to bottom. It's not going to be very big, probably about two inches wide with the wingspan and an inch and a half, maybe tall. And we'll put a bale near its back or top of its head so it can hang away. Yeah, I need to start doing these, I guess. It is getting that time of year. It's the most wonderful time of the year. Halloween is coming, and the trick-or-treaters are humming that they want to get candy this year. All right. I won't quit my day job. <laughs> okay. That's going to be the head to the bat. I'm trying to make it a little bit more triangular. I'm not going to have the mouth open. Sorry. And again, it's it's basically a rat head or a mouse head. You're going to have the uh, actually the elongated ears, so because they hear everything that they want through uh, through through their echolocation systems. I'm going to give them green eyes. Why not? I can. And I'm doing the fold and pull for the ears, and I'm making them a little bit long, longer and pointed. You see that? Head got a little funny. I got to melt it in a little bit better. Okay. Got to point this ear a little bit better. There we go. Green eyes. I can't see. Oh, sorry, Dara. Me and my can't. I, I gotta, you know, dock the pay of the, uh, of the cameraman. <laughs> he won't like it too much. I know that. And you can make the eyes just a little bit bigger. Again, because they're nocturnal. See what I'm doing so far? Actually, you can't. It's still probably cooling a little bit. Okay. Now we're going to continue. And I'm going to do the, a fold and pull to make the wings and do it in sections. Okay. Making sure I melt it in well.
And this fold and pull will also give it a very leathery look too. And you got what two or three sections in a bat wing. You got the part where his hands come out, right? Two little, two little uh, pointy thing. Well, we'll do those later. Come to think of it, we'll do those later, because that will uh, melt off as I finish the rest of the section of the wing here. And again, fold and pull. And if you can't do the fold and pull, again, you just press. And again, that gave it a really nice textured wing. And then you go ahead and uh, put the two hand claw thingies for the And then you can also come down to the bottom and put some more of these web points going on. To give it more of the bat wing look, I guess. We're getting there. We got one wing down, one wing to go. Again, it's that fold and pull. It's doing a really good job with making the the wing texture. And you do it, uh, to me, I do it by eye. I mean, where to put everything. Okay, now the next section for the getting there and there, I think that'll do it. One wing's a little bit bigger than the other. We're going to have to manipulate that a little. I'll get it right. It won't take long. You want them to be about even. You could probably have added more to the other one to make it even, but. There we go. Manipulate it a little. Nice wake up vid here in the UK. Hey, Rich. Thank you. I know this is not my normal working times to. And yeah, it's what? Eight something in the morning in the UK? And what better things to get batty to, right? Wake up and get batty to, right? Some more points. I'm also going to do a tail to this thing, and I'm going to do a bail on near the top of his head. And again, I haven't done too many bats in a long little while, so you'll have to forgive me if it's not a perfect bat. And that's the thing I like about these. Um, these videos, it gives me a chance to have challenge from your um, requests and shows that you can, if you try hard enough, you can accomplish just about anything you put your mind to. And there are some things that yes, I have that I do that I do not like and I need to get better at, but we all have those problems, don't we? Okay, I'm doing this thing here that's gonna be where I'm gonna put the whole punch bail, a bail, bail punch 
hole, uh, or buttonhole punch for the bail. Okay, I'm going to just leave that. And now we're going to work on the bottom half of this guy. He's coming along quite nicely, I thought. Close to two in Texas, yeah. Yeah, it's the best time in the it, best time of the day, especially in summer, to do your uh, your your most glass blowing, so you're not getting all the heated sun baking down on you, as well as heated flame baking with you. You know what I mean. Okay, here is the uh, one of the front feet. Bottom feet, I, I mean, yeah, the feet, feet, anyway. Now the tail, I'm basically going to do a flared out, just like I did for the wings, but flared out uh, thingy like so. And it's going to go all the way across and be nice and webbed. And I've got to do a nice uh, fold and pull all the way across. And then I'll uh, stretch it out a little better. <laughs> I was just thinking the same basic pose that I've got for this bat, I think, is my same basic pose for the eagle. It's just a little bit different. Same idea, wings, uh, tail, uh, you know what I mean. So. Dual lesson, eagle and bat, right? Right. That's probably where I'm getting most of my inspiration from is the bat, uh, the eagle. And I know that's not exactly the best idea for a bat, but it it translates pretty good, I think. Okay. Pinch, 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 sort of flaring it out a little bit. Do the web points at the bottom of the tail itself. Now, if I'd have done this right, I guess I could have brought in the legs off and onto the bottom of the tail part too, but I did not. Sorry, folks. Yeah, it is the, hot, the coolest time of the day. It was pretty pretty cool in in July here, but August did starting to call its name summer for sure. Holy cow! Okay. I'm gonna put two claws on this, put a bail loop on it, and I'm gonna call this one quits too. And I, with that, I think I will call. The evening closed. I feel like I've accomplished a few things, shown some nice pieces, and also uh, the bell hole punch at the very beginning of this show was pretty nice. Um, gives it, uh, people have been asking about that. Hey, Demented, nice to see you join the crowd. Seven people in the middle of the night, who knew? Well, that's true, again, it's summer and it's hot. And the best time for glass blowers to be out and about is cool night of the day, uh, the coolest part of the day, the night. There we go. I'm sort of, again, it's now that I think about it, it is very much like my eagle, but it does have a lot of bat like qualities. So, who knew? I'll get better at it and do another bat one of these days. How's that sound? Okay, I'm going to tap it off here. Fire polish the bale hole punch area. And put a bale on that with the new buttonhole punch that I made.
Uh-oh. I might have to use the smaller ones because I don't think I can get into that spot. <laughs> Give me a second. Now, where are they? Here, boy. Where'd you go? One, two. I don't think these will do it either. Nope. Oh, come on. I'm looking for the smallest set of buttonhole punches. And I'm doing a live show. My son just walked in. Oh, here they are. Got them. And I think they will do the trick. Oh, yeah. They can get into that little uh, cove I've made from bending back the wings a little bit. What does it look like? Yeah. Now that's when you know you're doing a pretty good job is when somebody who didn't know what you're doing comes up and says, oh, a bat. Well, yeah, that's true. And I'm reaming out the hole. And yeah, it was kind of tight in there and I'm glad I had this other hole punch that was a little smaller and tinier and it did the job quite nicely to get the uh, the hole in there and do the job it really worked out real well and with that warm it all out I was using your hammer I was using your hammer We're it. Yeah, right. There it is. My son, his torch, he's got an oxygen concentrator that the valve sticks at the very beginning. It, I, I got it for free. And what you have to do is tap it right at where the valve thing is. And if it, it it'll tell you almost immediately if you're doing it right because it'll, it'll go over and go, didn't do it. It it, uh, it switches over and goes, and when it goes, then you know you've got the job doing it. Might have helped if you had the valve open. Is that the pro Was that the problem? It's open now, or was it open before? Okay. Thanks, Paula. And I do appreciate uh, all you guys showing up in the middle of the night just uh, on a whim. And I like the live shows. And I know I've been doing a few uh, um, recorded shows. I was just trying something new and something a little different, trying to switch it up. Like it. Thanks for your input. <laughs> and with that, I, again, I'm going to go ahead and call this, this uh, show a success. And, and uh, give me a second. And my son wants to – the, the – uh, the uh, silver fumed one turned out really, really nice. The colors, there's a couple of different light fuming colors, like, of course, the yellows and some hues of blue, not, not majorly, and uh, works out real well. But, uh, oh, it still didn't do it. We'll get there. Um, again, thanks. Appreciate it. Glad you're out there, and I'm glad you're watching. And as always, enjoy your day. And carpe vitro. <laughs> Wait a minute. Let let my son say it better. Here you go. Carpe vitro. <laughs> he's a he's a younger version of myself, believe it or not. Again, thanks. As as always, enjoy your day. <laughs>